the granddaughter of Cesar Chavez, a great leader, a great friend, Christine Chavez. On behalf of the United Farm Workers and the entire Chavez family, we were proud to stand with you in opposition to Proposition 8. against an entire community. This issue has become so incredibly important to me. And like many of you on election day, I was incredibly upset and went to bed feeling defeated. But when I got up the next day, I remembered what Cezad used to say in those early days when he first began to take on the task of organizing farm workers. I remember him saying, it's not when you win, that's not what's most important. What's most important is that you don't give up the fight. I believe that we didn't lose because of the issue, no. We lost because of the deceit, the trickery, and outright hate that the proponents of Proposition 8 put out there. Let's make no mistake about what their campaign was about. Their campaign was about hate and about discrimination. And we know, we know as progressives, we know what it's like to face setbacks. And we also know that it's one thing to be against something, but it's an entirely different thing to be for something. And from, from the outset, proponents of marriage equality have always known that this is a fight for unity, a fight to end discrimination, and especially a fight to strengthen our families. In May of 2005, I took the first step and performed commitment ceremonies for LGBT couples because I was given a poll that showed that when Latinos were polled on the issue of marriage, we weren't where we needed to be. So I went out there and we did town halls and forums and we spoke to the Latino community. And yes, we've made progress, but I know that we have much more work to do. And I want you to know that I'm 110% committed to making sure that gay and lesbian couples have all the same rights as straight couples. A couple of years ago, I had the privilege of attending the state funeral out in Los Angeles for Rosa Parks. And there was a poet there. While she was eulogizing Mrs. Parks, she was explaining to us that on that day, when Mrs. Parks refused to give up her seat, she was not only uh, physically tired of working a whole day, but she was also mentally tired. She was mentally tired of not fighting back. The poet then went on to ask all of us, what is it that you're tired of? And what will you fight for? So I was sitting in the church, I began to think of the things that I'm tired of. And here's what I came up with. I'm tired as a woman, as a Latina, I am constantly having to defend my right to choose. I'm tired that the dropout rates are incredibly high among our black and brown children. I'm tired that the people who put food on our tables and work in our factories continue to live in the shadows because we can't come up with good immigration policy. But I am most, I am most tired, Oscar come out here, I am most tired, this is my husband Oscar, but I am most tired that gay and lesbians in this country aren't given all the same rights that were given to Oscar and I when we said I do, and we're gonna fight like hell. So today, today, we are gonna lead a march in the spirit of Cesar Chavez and Dr. Martin 